He'll never be like Namdi Kanu. He can't come near my status in this world, Asari Dokubo. Recall that weeks ago, the ex Niger Delta militant leader, Asari Dokubo, asked President Bola Metinibu not to release the leader of the outlawed indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Mazi Namdi Kanu. Asari Dokubo said that Namdi Kanu is a criminal and should face the law, and that releasing him is tantamount to rewarding criminality. Asari Dokubo got a lot of knocks from Igbos after he made such statement. And Ohanese Indigbo made a special appeal to President Tinubu not to act based on the things Asari Dokubo said about Inamdi Kanu. In a recent video, Asari Dokubo has replied to those who attacked him for making utterances against Inamdi Kanu. He said he can never be like Inamdi Kanu and that Kanu can never reach or come close to his status in this world. Well, in his words, he says, I can never be like Inamdi Kanu. He can never come near my status in this world or in the world hereafter. It is good you advise your people, the egos. It is advice I'm giving and is not a curse. I mean, what, what, what can you say about this? Of course, it's very triggering, it's provocative. And if you're going to fall for this rhetoric at this time and age, after everything we have seen in the news and what IPOB has gone through, what Namdi Khan has gone through, and how the Nigerian press and media acts, then to be, to be fair, like, you know, you're acting like, you're acting very unwise. In some words, foolish. Um, so, yes, you can definitely see that, you know, the people who support IPOB would obviously react and who support the Namdi Khan would react to this and say, Hasari Dokobo, how can you say this? How can you say that? But I'm just saying that if we're going to grow and be progressive, we cannot engage in petty conversations like this. Why are we discussing, okay, Asari Dokoba said that, okay, and? And I think that's the thing. It's the attention we give to these individuals. They know what buttons to press. And that's why Asari Dokoba is becoming relevant. Imagine he says something like this and nobody reacts, as in we blink and turn the other way. Would he have the confidence to come and be talking nonsense? Of course not. And I think it is then worse because it creates controversy and probably even more distraction as to what we should be focusing on. We should be focusing on the presidency. In fact, we should all really be focusing on the tribunal and its progression. But it seems like when we, we are defeated, everyone just, you know, well, we accept the new regime and this is what it seems like the next four years will be like. So I just think the comment, I can never be like an American, who are you? You know what I mean? It's like, of how much importance do you really... See, perception can be a very dangerous thing. So it's like, okay, you're not being the one, you know, that is... I mean, first of all, you don't have a movement that is as powerful as IPOB, let's be very honest. Um, you are an ex-Niger Delta militant leader. I mean, sorry, okay? You, it's actually the other way around because I think, you know, to go through what Namdi Khan is go going through, you definitely need to have a movement that is, I mean, that is quite impactful. That is, that has numbers that have determined followers. I mean, you know, with the strength of IPOB, I don't even think Namdi Kanu has to physically be there. And that shows the strength of a movement where the leader doesn't have to be there. The people themselves can hold their own. And they are, you cannot deny that they are strong IPOB, you know, followers that are out there, right? And I think maybe it shows the kind of person Namdi Kanu is. Um, and I think with the IPOB movement, I think it's shown the most... Of all movements, it's shown the most character because, I mean, it's faced the most resistance, to be fair. So, you know, it's been, the, the, the movement has been built, right? The people have been built, regardless. Anyways, I just think that, you know, what Asari Rukobo says, you can definitely tell, you know, it is with intent, with, with the intention to, to provoke. Um, and the thing is... The problem that I find is that when IPOB members, and I get you are defenders of your movement, but you, as a people, you also have to be intelligent as to where you put your attention. You can't give it to someone like Asari Doku, but why? Why? Because what would then happen is, I mean, you have people literally listing in the comments why Mazinam Rikana can never be like Asari Doku, but at the end of the day, Asari, he knows what he's doing. He's going to get the attention. He will get IPOB followers to... Go to all your social media handles, you know, talk to him, say what you're saying is not right, give it back, da, 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 da. But like now you are increasing his engagement, you are increasing the popularity of his name. Everything is in his favor. And Abdekano is still, you know, an IPOB, is still not respected by the Nigerian government. And I think that's where 
we need to find our you know focus and not be easily distracted because right now it seems like well, well there's nothing else for you to do come on no 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 so it's like you know it's very clear that he's using Amri Kandu's name to just put himself out there I mean you know you, you have a lot of sycophants and clout chasers to be very honest with you because Asai Dokobo holds no position he doesn't and just how many days ago he was out here talking to Tinubu, you know, to, 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 what was it? It was about oil theft in the Niger Delta region and he was accusing the military of it. And it's like, okay, you can definitely tell that in the last how many times, you know, he's been very intentional to put himself out there. But for what purpose? Why are you so, you're just, you're just looking for attention. You can see in his actions that all he's looking for is attention so why give it to him i think this is the problem and i think nigerians are so distracted we are easily distracted you know a narrative can just take over our thinking our logic and the next thing the conversation has changed i mean you look at the energy and the buzz that came with the elections and now the inauguration i think nigerians don't really have the strength the organization and really the will to push through an event and i just think that because i don't think for nigerians they've gotten to a point where they feel like nigeria is worth sacrificing for i mean the country has made for very hyper selfish and independent people yes there are people who want to stay in nigeria well it seems like they're comfortable but most of people of the people want to leave so i think yes you know we can attempt at several points to really care and want to have a nation but i don't really think we understand why we should fight for Nigeria. We don't really understand the future and the potential, not potential really, is the incoming decay. What if it's not already decayed already? And the looseness of, of our society. I mean, we are basically in very big trouble in my personal opinion. And I think that, you know, for for a lot of Nigerians, I just think, you know, it's it's the media and you know the news you know we just hear comments that uh what someone has said something against your favorite politician we are very much like that we're very it's like i don't know what kind of culture to describe it but we like to follow we like to that fan culture the worship culture the praise culture we like to associate it with certain people you know the belongingness, the click, you know, this is the person I support, this is the part I support. Again, we are easily divisible. And that's why we, you know, we are controlled anyhow. Put what you think about it in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.